Hi fellas, uh, so you've been asked to draw a multi-line graph uh, for today's work. So the first question is, well, what is a, a multi-line graph? Well, quite simply, it's a, it's a line graph with more than one line on it. So the one you drew last time had one line, uh, which is just showing the um, European population coming to New Zealand. This one is showing two groups of people coming to New Zealand. Hence the reason why we call it a multi-line graph, or more than one. So very simply, exactly the same process as what we've done previously. The first thing we have to do is to draw our axes. And so what you want to do is have a look at what the highest statistic actually is, the highest number that you have. So the highest number going up the side, you know, is 470,000. Now you know me, I don't like using uh, half numbers and, and that, I like to round them up. So I'm going to round that up to 500,000 like so. So there we are there, and I'll go... Four, three, two, one. Make sure I get it even. Zero like that. Again, you guys will measure your one out. So your one will be absolutely accurate as we go. Now, you can see there that I said 500,000 or 470,000 was our highest stat, but I only got 500 there. But we know, of course, that when I label my axes on the side, so I'm going to say it's going to be population, so this will be at least 270 here, and it's going to have brackets like that. That is saying that you add three zeros to these numbers as well, and it just saves me a bit of time. It makes your axis like a bit neater, um, and also when you're dealing with some really, really big numbers, it can be much easier to like that. The second thing we look at is what is my time going down the bottom. So I know that my first time is 1950. And it goes all the way through to 2015. Now I don't really like that 2015 thing, so we're going to I'm going to push it out to 2020. So same as we go, going across like that, and I'm going to go 1950 through there. Okay, then I want to break it down to even 10-year periods. So 1950, 1960, 1970, 1980. Just looking that they're all the same size. I'll be measuring those as we go across. 80, 90, 2000, 2010, and then 2020, like so. And I might decide to write my, the numbers in for every single one if I've got room. In this case, I don't. It's going to get a bit messy. So I'm going 1950, I'll go 1970, 80, I'll go 1990, and I'll go 2010, like so. Also, make sure that I also have it down here. You know, I have a title, and you'll remember from last time that the title is What is it? What's it showing? And when was it actually taken? So it is a multi line graph showing the population of, I think it's uh, Asian and, um, and Pacifica uh, peoples in New Zealand from 1950 through to 2015. That would be in your axis like so. Now the one difference here, because this is exactly the same as what you did last time, is that it's a multi-line graph. So what we have to do this time is actually show what each line actually is. And to do that, we have to have a key. Now I'm going to have my key up here, but generally what you would want to do is to have it underneath the, the graph or maybe to one side. I obviously don't have enough room, so I'm just going to put mine up through here. So here's my key. And the blue line, I'm going to say, is going to be Pacific. So that is Pacific peoples to New Zealand. The red line, I'm going to say, is going to be Asian people to New Zealand. And that means that when I draw each one of my graphs, uh, I'll be able to use my key and work out which one is for which group of people who are immigrating to New Zealand. So what we need to do now is to have a look and see what the population stats would actually be. And all you have to do now is first of all start with Pacifica and work your way through. Now I'm going to do the Pacific one with you, looking at my, my notes through here. So the first one is 1,000. So I know that is actually 100,000. The 1,000 uh, for the Pacific population 1950 is going to be very, very low down through here. And there's an X. 1960, 25,000. So 50 would be halfway there, across there, like so. The next one is 48,000, that's close to halfway, not quite. That's for 1970. 1980, 95,000, so starting to rise up a bit now. Here we are there. 
1990, 160,000 Pacifica people in New Zealand. Now, again, this is not just because of um, immigration, but also birth rates as well, because many people uh, from Pacifica living in New Zealand now uh, with their kids and having more kids, and that is just adding to the Pacifica population, which is fantastic. Um, the next one we have is for the year 2000, 225,000. So 225 would be about there across market and like so. The next one is 280,000 for um, 2010, 280, it's been right up close to 300, so it's about there. Uh, and then finally for 2015, we're at 300,000. Now you'll see here that in fact I've got them in 10 year gaps, so halfway there would be 2015. I don't have 2020 yet, but that's okay. I'll show you a wee trick in a minute. So what we can do is go up now to 300,000 like so, and just put a wee mark in there like that, making sure that it lines up with that one there. Now what we can do is actually look at the curve and kind of predict, make a prediction for 2020. And that's where line graphs are really good. Of course, the final thing we have to do then is to draw a nice, accurate, smooth curve like so, showing the population. And straight away, I can see that in the 1950s, and it looks like in the 1960s, things started to really take off. And the Pacifica population in New Zealand began to grow and grow very rapidly. Let's have a look at the Asian population. So the Asian population, we don't really have too many stats in 1950. I can tell you though that in the 1860s, during the gold rushes, especially in Otago, we saw huge numbers of um, people from China in particular coming to New Zealand to look for gold. Um, and they settled in, in, uh, in central Otago in particular, uh, and then moved around to two other um, goldfield areas in New Zealand when gold was found there on the west coast and up in the Coromandel. But then, when the gold was gone, the majority of those gold miners from China in particular left and went overseas and went looking for gold elsewhere. However, some stayed, and there are some wonderful families uh, living in central Otago and Otago in particular uh, of um, Asian descent, uh, and they have been living in New Zealand uh, for well over 150 years, 160 years. They have a wonderful history uh, in this area. But we don't include that in our in our graph, unfortunately, because it just goes too far back. We're talking about 1950. In 1950, look at my stats here, it says the Asian population in New Zealand was again estimated to be about 1,000, okay? 1960, it went up to 20,000. So it's just below the Pacifica population at the moment. And you'll see I'm using a different color. I'm using the color now for um, the Asian line, which I'm going to be drawing in in a minute. The next one we have is 46,000. So 1970, 46,000, still just below the uh, the Pacifica numbers. 1980, we're at 95, sorry, oops, sorry, that was 26 there. 95 there, 45,000, 1980. But 1990, we all of a sudden, go up to 160,000. So up through here, we're now seeing in 1990, it really starting to rise. Yeah, like so. And you see here that all of a sudden, the Pacifica population in New Zealand is just now starting to actually really catch up with what's going on with the Pacifica groups. So sorry, that was a bit low through here. I'm going to bring that one down again. I made a bit of a mistake there. So 1990 through there is at 94,000 there. Okay. But we're starting now to see a massive increase. It's the next period where the biggest increase takes place. It goes from 90 odd thousand to 240,000. So 240,000 is through there, up through here. And that is pretty much on par with our Pacifica families as well. And then again, 2010, it goes up to 410,000. So there's 410, way up through here, like that. And then the final one, 470,000, and we can see it really taking off. Now, the difference you'll see is that the Asian population starts off quite slow, and then the 80s and then the 90s, it just starts to skyrocket like that. Now, the benefit of a multi line graph is that we can actually see when different things occur in history. And we can see, for instance, the period in time when the Pacific migration or the Pacific population was overtaken by the Asian population in New Zealand. 
And this was something that actually surprised me. I wasn't aware that the Asian population in New Zealand was as big as it actually is. It's a very significant group in New Zealand. It has overtaken the Pacific group in number. Both these wonderful uh, um, ethnic backgrounds or ethnic groups have contributed to New Zealand society. And one of the things we're going to be looking at over the next few days is how these groups have actually contributed to New Zealand. So that is how you construct a multi-line graph. Um, I hope that made sense. I'm sure that you guys will be able to do it yourself. Make sure that you make sure it has got a title, it's got labelled axes, uh, it's accurate, it's neat, uh, and you're following all the different things along the way. I look forward to seeing those and your write-up because a write-up on a graph is very, very important. Uh, make sure that's all completed as well. I look forward to seeing that. All the very best, guys. Good luck.